Hello and welcome to Walker Tea Review. I'm Jason Walker. The uh, cold season, the cold temperatures are upon many of us. A great time for some hot teas. Got one today. Got my water boiling. Got my equipment ready here. Scooping out enough to cover the bottom, say, inch diameter of my three ounce guy one. Drop the leaf so that one goes in there too. Adding my water that's been brought to a boil, or an early boil, not a complete rolling boil. So I'm going to put it enough. A little bit would rest just above the rim of the lid. And there we go. Looks good. Let me get this kettle out of the way. Put the lid on here. Just right. Now as that cools, even though there's water above the rim now, as it cools it will probably drop down below the rim just a little bit. So, talking about this tea and introducing it, this is from Peony Tea of Singapore. This is their Wu Yi Sacred Lily. Uh, it often gets, uh, or this, the Chinese characters tell the story that this is can be called Shui Xian as well. Um, they have a note on their product page that says that uh, the, the, the terms water uh, narcissus may be used uh, sometimes in relation to this tea, um, water immortal, water fairy, and the, the product page says that uh, the Chinese folklore mythology doesn't really have a lot of um, water immortals or, or necessarily water fairies in, in, that compose it, and that more likely this is talking about the, the Narcissus, or and, and there may be some... Uh, aromatic characteristics. We'll, we'll look at that to see if there's any associations with uh, Narcissus and, and uh, this particular Wulong. So, this one, 10 grams, a sample size, available for nine and a half Singapore dollars on the Peony website. This tea is sourced from the, the Zhengyan, the, the, the proper area, uh, the kind of the officially recognized, the traditional source, because you can get in that specific Wu'i mountain area, which is in Fujian province in China, and you can get just outside the mountains or on the rolling hills, you know, further down, lower or further out, and lower elevations, which are a different area. And then there's the fields, the flatter, lower-lying regions around that, which is a kind of a third area. Sometimes you can get it, they dissect it into more details or even more parts than that. But those are some of the main components. This one is from that official mountainous area. This was a spring 2012 harvest, and it was uh, harvested from actual uh, the cultivar, the Shui Xian cultivar, the cultivar that is officially or traditionally used to create Shui Xian tea. So that's a positive aspect as well. Talking about this tea, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and look at the dry leaf, the wet leaf, and the liquor. Starting off here with the dry. Aromas have that nice kind of toasty. Um, Toasted oat type uh, smell, light and maybe nuttiness there too. Okay, scooping out a few of the leaves, you get a good scoop here. Uh, I mean, that's actually too much, but what I see here is a lot fairly large leaves for them in a lot of cases here, more than an inch, and in, in in several cases here, they are twisted along the length of the middle vein of the leaf, which is usual. There are, are nice dark gray brown bister type of color. Uh, you do have portions that are smaller than an inch, maybe half an inch or so. Portions of leaves there also twisted along in the, in the kind of the same manner. Um, yeah, I would say, uh, I mean, you know, depending on what scoop you get, what you use, you can get some nice, big, full-size looking leaves there, okay? So let me kind of scoop that back or return that to the to my bag here. And be able to go on now and talk a little bit about the wet leaf and the liquor. And do that, I'm going to have to pour. So I'm going to get my pitcher here ready. Angle my lid over to the side a little bit. Hold the lid with my index finger, the side of my bowl with my middle finger and my thumb there. Get a nice smooth pour. Shake out those last few drops that were down at the bottom that were closer to the leaf that are probably uh, richer in, in taste and color. Get 
get those out. I'm going to give this a shake as well. Just kind of loosen those leaves as they accumulated on the side of the bowl here as I poured. Now I'm ready to give it a smell. Nice rich smells. Again, a lot of toasty kind of heat smells, but, uh, but it's like toasted oat, uh, maybe some toasted uh, toasted nut, almost verging a little bit, a little bit over towards an almost kind of lightly charred type of nut there, or, or grain, but a sweetness there too, as if there were a little bit of honey had been drizzled over it as it was roasting. Now the lid, inside of the lid, that catcher captures a lot more of the sweetness and less of the harshness, and so you do, you can almost get almost a, a, a sweet floral type of fragrance there. Again, it's but it's rich and it's kind of heavier and it's more honeyed. So in that sense, it's not a, it's not a, a it's not necessarily a light sweetness of uh, a light fruit type of sweetness. This is more of a, a deep, uh, again, honey nectar type of sweetness there. Okay. Let me pull out a few of these lids, the, a few of these leaves rather. Here's a leaf. Uh, mm, Somewhat unfurled, not necessarily completely. You'd have to kind of tease it apart. You can see some blotches of, of darker oxidation kind of going from the outer edge in towards the center of the leaf there. Couldn't really pull that one apart open too much. Um, this one is a bit thicker. A lot of these leaves that I've, the, cup, the two leaves I've pulled out here, they are kind of ragged. They've, been, they've got some tears to them. They're not... Uh, fully uh, intact or fully uh, complete and unscathed. Here's another one. Again, there is some there's some greenness to it and I, that came out as these became these leaves became wet. But you can see that, that they're fairly wide, large leaves. Um, oxidation blotches here and there in, in cases. Um, a lot of more oxidation along the edges, and, and that oxidation is allowed to kind of move further deeper into the middle of the leaf than some other uh, woolongs. Um, let me pull out just one more. I mean, you get a variety, you get a range of thicknesses. For example, this leaf that I just pulled here does feel a bit thicker, a bit coarser, like it's a bit of a more mature leaf. Um, thickness can determine sometimes leaves or get uh, pulled apart into different grades. The, the tender, younger ones become, a, for example, a higher grade, better grade than, a, than some of the older, thicker leaves. And so the, that grading process and, and how which leaves get put together to determine to be part of a grade can be a factor as well. Looking at this liquor though, let me give that a swirl here. Hold that up to the light. It's got a nice um, brownish, uh, reddish rust. Well, more towards a brown on the rust than rust, really. It's got a nice, warm, almost kind of a very dark. Uh, looking at a, a, a big jar of honey, uh, not being able to see the light directly through it, but looking down at the honey, you get that this kind of brown color that you see here. Yeah, uh, you know, almost of a yellowish brown there. Give it a pour here. Again, a combination of that honey type of note with the, the toasted, toasted grain type of sweetness there. Looks nice in the cup here as well. I mean, it's got a nice sheen to it. Not dull or murky. So let's give. I'm going to give it a taste now. First thing I really wanted to look for was texture. First sip, a little gentler on the texture. I, my mouth seemed to kind of adjust, um, and so I, I detected more texture on that second sip. It seemed uh, it seemed kind of thinner at first. <coughs> now, uh, not necessarily the the richest, thickest texture that I've ever that I've come across in a Shuixian.
but still has those kind of toasted grain components in the in the aroma and taste a, a light sweetness that sits on the tongue sits kind of in the middle of the tongue and especially the aftertaste i'm still getting some of that grainy that uh, toasted grain element i'm getting a kind of a, a syrupy a sweet syrupy thickness starting to just kind of uh, resonate on the top and middle the middle of my tongue and it's just creating this it's kind of almost radiating out into this thick syrupy type feel throughout the rest of my mouth and so that's a positive it's a nice uh, rich bodied type of uh, component there in the aftertaste so that's pleasant uh, makes it feel just kind of jammy sweet type of experience Again, kind of honeyed, honeyed sweetness, honey type of taste or aromas combined with, uh, again, that kind of toasted grain. The dominant components there gets a little bit, a little, a little more earthy in the back, which uh, is not a, a, a negative thing. Um, so those, I'm, that's what's coming out dominantly. Um, there is a bit of a, again, a nice kind of sweet, um, <coughs> freshly tilled earth type of uh, aroma that's traveling in this. And again, that's a, that's a positive. It smells, uh, it's, it just smells uh, wholesome in that sense. So looking at this tea as a whole, the components here, uh, that, pretty, that pretty good strength in the aftertaste, that's a, that's a driving component here. Uh, Off-camera tastings. I got fairly, I got, was able to, you know, replicate this experience, you know, fairly consistent uh, strength in the aftertaste and the components for at least two, probably three, you could argue the third, it may have dropped off just a little bit, maybe, maybe not, but uh, so because of the, those components there, um, good showing here, decent showing here, I would give this one a um, you know, I'd probably give this one a 90. Good, solid components. Maybe not the most outstanding out there, but like I said, something plenty to reward you with. So, come back to Walker Tea Review to find those rewards that you're looking for, those ones that you're going to look for next in your future teas as well.